हेलो एवरी वन माई नेम इज मिनी सेठी आई होप यू ऑल आर स्टेइंग हेल्दी टूडे वी आर गोइंग टू टॉक अबाउट बॉम्बल्स इन्वेंट्री अप्रोच टू मनी डिमांड दिस अप्रोच इज गिवन बाय विलियम जे बॉम्बल दिस अप्रोच बेसिकली टॉक्स अबाउट ट्रांजेक्शन डिमांड फॉर मनी अकॉर्डिंग टू दिस अप्रोच पीपल होल्ड मनी बिकॉज दे नीड मनी फॉर देयर डे टू डे ट्रांजेक्शन According to this approach, people hold money because they need money for their day-to-day -day transaction. But by holding money, we bear loss of interest income. How holding more money can become cause of loss of interest income, we will clearly understand with the help of this diagram. In this diagram, on x-axis we have time and y-axis we have money holding. Suppose your monthly salary is twelve thousand rupees. On first Jan in your account, you receive twelve thousand rupees, and you withdraw whole amount of twelve thousand rupees for your monthly transaction. And you will spend this twelve thousand rupees till first Feb when you receive your next salary. Again on first Feb, you receive twelve thousand rupees in your account. Again you withdraw whole amount of twelve thousand rupees for your monthly transaction, and you will spend this. This amount till first March when you receive your next salary, and this process will continue. According to Bommel, we need not to withdraw this twelve thousand rupees for one time because we are not going to spend this twelve thousand rupees in a one day. We will spend this amount within a month. For example, first fifteen days you will spend six thousand, and next fifteen days you will spend remaining six thousand rupees. That's why we need not to withdraw this twelve thousand rupees. in the one day instead of this we can only withdraw 6000 rupees for 15 days and remaining 6000 rupees for 15 days we can invest in bonds or we can keep our money in our saving account as we know saving account is less risky as compared to bonds by doing this we can earn some interest income so here we can say that our average money holding is 6 Thousand rupees, or we can say that our unnecessary holding is six thousand rupees. This holding we don't need because we are not going to spend the whole amount in a one day. By holding this six thousand rupees, we are losing our interest income. Now, with the help of this diagram, we will clearly understand. how we can earn some interest income by reducing our money holding suppose your salary is 12000 rupees and on first jan in your account you receive 12000 rupees now you are not going to withdraw whole amount of 12000 rupees at one time you will withdraw only 6000 rupees and you will spend this 6000 rupees till 15 jan and remaining 6000 rupees for next 15 days you are going to invest in bonds or you will keep some money in your saving account by doing this you can earn some interest income similar on first feb you receive 12000 rupees you are not going to withdraw whole amount at one time you will withdraw only 6000 Rupees and you will spend six thousand rupees till fifteen Feb and remaining six thousand rupees you are going to invest in bonds or you will keep money in your saving account by doing this you can earn some interest income and this process will remain continuous. So here you can see still we have average money holding of three thousand rupees. or we can say that still we have unnecessary holding of 3000 rupees which is cause of loss of interest income but this holding is less as compared to earlier earlier it was 6000 rupees we can reduce our holding more and earn more interest income by investing more money in bonds or keeping more money in saving account how much money we hold and how much money we invest on bonds or keep in saving account it depend on two types of cost opportunity cost and transaction cost opportunity cost means loss of interest income when you hold money opportunity cost means loss of interest income when you hold money transaction cost include broker fee and transportation cost when you invest your money on bonds you have to bear broker fee or when you are going to bank for withdrawing money again and again you have to bear transportation cost so we can say that broker fee and transportation cost are part of transaction cost 
this is very confusing state for individual if we hold money he has to bear the loss of interest income on the other hand if we invest money on bonds or keep money on saving account he has to bear a broker fee and transportation cost that's why in this theory bommel shows optimum amount of money holding so that we can minimize our opportunity cost as well as transaction cost as we know interest rate and holding money have a inverse relation when interest rate is high we will hold less money because now interest rate is very high we will invest our more and more money and will earn more interest income so we can say that interest rate and holding money have a inverse relation on the other hand broker fee or we can say that transaction cost and holding money have a direct relation when transaction cost is high we will hold more money for example broker fee is very high if broker fee is very high that means our investment cost is very high then why we invest instead of this we will hold money so we can say that transaction cost and holding money have a direct relation interest rate and holding money have a inverse relation in this formula you can c c equal to square root of 2 by over r here c is optimum withdrawal of cash c basically tell us how much money we are holding b is broker fee or we can say that b is transaction cost y is our income r is our interest rate you can see here c is our holding money and r is our interest rate you can see holding money and interest rate have a inverse relation on the other hand b is our broker fee or we can say that b is transaction cost b and c have a direct relation now we understand this theory with the help of this diagram in this diagram on y axis we have interest rate and x axis we have transaction demand transaction demand means how much money we hold for transaction purpose transaction demand means how much money we hold for transaction purpose as we earlier discussed interest rate and holding money have a inverse relation means when interest rate high we will hold less money for transaction purpose on the other hand when interest rate low we will hold more money for transaction purpose in this diagram you can see as interest rate is increasing we are holding less money for transaction purpose at o r1 interest rate we are holding o m3 money for transaction purpose as interest rate increase from o r1 to o r2 our transaction demand reduce o m3 to o m2 so we can say that interest rate and transaction demand for money have a inverse relation second thing our transaction demand for money also depend on our income these three curves represent our income as well as our transaction demand for money md means money demand for transaction purpose y means income you can see as our income increasing y1 to y2 y2 to y3 our transaction demand for money also increasing md to md1 md1 to md2 so we can say that income and transaction demand for money have a direct relation as income increase transaction demand for money also increase but interest rate and transaction demand for money have a inverse relation this is all about bommel's inventory approach to transaction demand for money i think you got it and thank you so much for watching this video bye take care